Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to the Grim Fix Podcast. I am one of your hosts, David. You can call me D. 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 AKA the Big D. Big the D. Ha- that big D. <laughs> <laughs> um, big D. <laughs> I'm here with my co-host JR and Charles in the What's house. Up, everyone? Yo. Today is officially hat day, apparently. Hat day. We are here wearing hats. Yes, indeed. Yes, wearing hats. Yeah, All I right. don't feel like I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> well, it is a hat. It is, but I still feel like I'm wearing a burlap sack. A sombrero. A sombrero. <laughs> so, uh... I am very excited to be here today. Obviously, we all are. Uh, It's a little bit of a hassle to get here, but we are here once again. Um, By the time this episode comes out, um, Thanksgiving has come and passed. So we want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. We hope happy Thanksgiving, uh, everyone. We just hope you guys, you know, spent it the way you should. uh, It's it's not about the parties. It's not even about the turkey. I think it's more about a. Family Give connection, right? Um, <clears throat> and even if it's at a distance, like you see us, this is how we connect virtually. Um, I want to thank everyone who is following the podcast, who is following our YouTube channel. We have officially crossed the 100 subscriber mark. Might not seem a, you know like a lot to many, but for us, it's uh, it's awesome, man. So I want to thank you all who have subscribed. Those of you who are watching our videos, those of you who are listening to our podcast, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we are the Grim Fix Podcast. First of all, it is totally free for you to subscribe, so I invite you to do so. Please click that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you are watching us on YouTube, we want to read your comments, so don't forget to drop a comment. If you are listening to us in a podcast uh, format, Follow the podcast. Give us a few stars. Drop us a review. Tell the world how awesome and amazing we are and how much you enjoy us showing up weekly to fulfill your grim needs. So, yeah, you can also find us social media. Yeah, Facebook, if you guys see Instagram. an extra face. That's my grandson. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, Facebook, Instagram, the Grim Fix podcast. We also want to hear your stories. Um, maybe you could be the topic of our next episode. We want to discuss and read your story so you can drop that in an email to the Grim Fix podcast at gmail.com. Do you remember the the death by beard? Uh, yeah. That you <laughs> said yesterday. <laughs> so I decided I, I decided to do a little bit of research, right? And I found this page that's called afterlifefunerals.com.au. Okay. And it says the 12 most ridiculous death in history because you really can't make this stuff up. (laughs) And here is a funny one for you. Death by alarm clock. Oh, really? (laughs) (laughs) And it goes... If you ever thought of Jerry rigging an elaborate system to wake you up in the morning utilizing water, a small mallet, and a neighbor's cat, let this story convince you otherwise. Jesus a lamplighter in the 1880s in Flatbush, New York, concocted his own wa- waking up system involving a clock, a wire, and a 10-pound stone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen, I don't get happy by anybody's death, but shit like that is like, yo, you really asked for it. Nah, that really yes. was bad. The problem, he had a party and moved his bed, then got drunk and put it back in the wrong place. The next morning, his head was crushed by his own waking up device. Oh I love God. how we're laughing while we read this. And, and, and there you go. And the egg cue, though. No, the other one. No, 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 no. I didn't get that way. No, 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 no. Wow. 
So yeah, death by alarm clock. You death know what's crazy? Like, I mean, I remember me. I remember Jr. did the same thing. Like, it's crazy how now we can look up this information. We can see fit pictures. We can see videos. But back then, you guys remember Faces of Death? Oh yeah, yes. I actually like those. And Rotten.com. Rotten.com. Rotten. That was like the yes. first website ever. I was like, holy shit! They show. They yes. show dead people. Now they got they got another one. Um, I think it's um Gorgrish. Well, Ogrish has been that's old. Yeah, but that's another website that if you want to see that was if, yeah, that was the shit back then. Like if you wanted to see, like you would see, like like I remember I would look for uh like uh Middle Eastern like beheadings. Oh my I would look for that. She was like, holy shit, like like it is it's nuts that now now people don't really look for that. I mean, now you I mean at a point there was a point in like facebook now they monitor all this stuff and yeah but, yep. but when facebook first came out and with passing years like people would put videos of shit like that people getting burned alive and you know shit like that and, and beheaded but, and stuff but back then before the internet you had to go search if there was a video store that had it you would have to yep. go rent the tape yeah, that's like um, and- <laughs> <laughs> and they had like faces dev a one, two, three, four, five. Like, like I remember there were two deaths that back then. I, I I think you're gonna say one that it probably is the same one that I'm thinking, but Which let's one? see. It's the old man that well, it's it's an old dude. He's in an office where he shoots his head. He blows his brains out with with a. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah, and all you see is like the gushing. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like I remember there was one, I don't know if you remember, of a magician. Since he mentioned oh, that alarm clock. Oh, yes. He was a magician and he Dude, did like, see those. it was like a big weight over his head and that weight had knives, right? Yeah. The trick was he was tied and laying like on a bed or whatever and there was, that weight was over his head with a rope and then there was a candle on the other side, of lit. <laughs> and he had to escape before that candle burned out the rope. <laughs> and he doesn't make it. And that shit just goes oh, up on his oh, head. Yo, it's sick. And then it's there was sick. another one that I remember. I think it was in the Middle East where they execute people and they would just have Bibles. I don't remember what it was for, but. Okay. I, I know saw that they, one where they would just throw them. people on like it was like on a fire. hole. No, no, it was like a hole. Oh. Not even a hole. It was like a ditch. Papa. And they would throw them in there and then they just shoot them. And I remember oh. the video. This guy yo, gets shot here in the face and you. See, oh, yes. I remember that one, bro. No, you, you remember the one where they show. Um, I'm guessing it's military where they slice the neck of the other guy. And all you hear is the gurgling. Nah, I don't remember that one. Oh, what? You have to see that one. I do remember the first time I laughed <laughs> in one of the faces of death. I don't know if you re- well, <laughs> I think it was like in an airport. Some shit. I know the guy gets shot and all you hear is ay, ay, ay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I remember that you one. You remember that, right? <laughs> and everyone was like, yeah, I found that so funny. Like, it's, it's I mean, it's sad, but yeah. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I remember that one clearly, yo. Yes, faces of death before the internet. Yep. Yeah, I still, I still look it up. So I still see be seeing some videos. There was one picture from Rotten.com that got ingrained in my brain, and it was about the the hand stuck on the meat grinder. Oh, you guys, do you guys remember gross. that picture? Yes, I remember yes. that. Picture. I was like, oh. that was like one of my first pictures that I saw from that that website. That that, that, that must be Ryan. painful. Like, I think the first thing I saw was when they had put up, oh, we have uh, pictures of the autopsy of Tupac, and I saw that, that one. I never got to see. I never. And then I stumbled that. onto what? a picture of a man sticking his hand in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and that shit was so fucking traumatizing. <laughs> I guess that's when fisting came popular. I'm talking, no, no, his hand was in there. It's about like in there, like oh like, my god, like, you couldn't see his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Like that's the first human-sized puppet. 
Oh my god, I oh my god. There's a child here. Sorry. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, you need to go over there with mommy, please. Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> yes, faces of death and Ryan.com and ogres.com. All right, so, um, this weekend, uh, sadly, uh, what's his name? I call him Tommy, but his name is Jason David Frank, right? Yes. And you know him as yep. the Green Ranger from the Power Rangers. I don't want to go. Condolences to his family. Uh, condolences to his yep. family, man. It sucks that this guy had, I think, four kids. Um, apparently, when the, when the news came out, yeah, they just said death. They didn't, they didn't say what it was. And then it came out that, I mean, sadly, it was suicide. Apparently, apparently he had a rocky relationship with his wife. Um, I guess they were at a hotel and... They both had separate rooms. I mean, according to TMZ, right? They had argued and then everything calmed down and everybody went to their own room. But then they ended up arguing again in the outside of, I think, his room to which he gets upset, goes inside of his room, locks the door, doesn't ever come out. Till eventually, you know, they start getting concerned and they speak to uh, the hotel management and they had to go into the room which sadly they found them hanging in the bathroom. So condolences to the family, to his four kids, man, especially. Um, yeah, I didn't know. So, I mean, because of this, I, I started reading up on him and I didn't know that originally he he was supposed to be. I mean, I, I don't remember that. Well, Power Rangers, I do remember watching it. I don't remember when he was introduced to Power Rangers. I think when I started watching, he was already in Power Rangers. Yeah, but apparently he was introduced as a villain and he was only yes. supposed to be for 14 episodes and they were supposed to kill him off or just take him off the show, which they did take him off the show. And then he had such a positive impact on the show that they brought him back as a white ranger. Yeah, I prefer him as a white ranger. He looked way better. I Even though I hated that movie. flute thing, like, nah, that green ranger shit was the shit. I remember. Uh, you like green? You saw that? Right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> when you saw that, I remember how hype you start doing this at the TV. Like what? <laughs> I remember that. Be fighting with shit. That's the that's that not was their the shit. shit, man. I remember the first time I saw Power Rangers. Whoosh, oof, I was like twelve, maybe, but exciting, exciting times. Exciting times indeed. Um, what else? I also found out. I was asking you guys if you guys ever watched. Uh, I mean, for those listening or watching, maybe this might not be news to you. I was mind blown when I read this. So you guys know Boy Meets World, right? For those of you uh, who've watched. I do. The iconic character, Mr. Feeney. Yeah, that's the teacher. He's the yes. And then he becomes the principal, right? right. For the first time in history. The common man had access to the same information that used to be available only to the privileged few. Did you know oh my God. that he is Kit from Knight Rider? Do you wish further information on Silicon Valley? Hell no, I want to know who you are and how you're listening in. There's no reason for increased volume. I am scanning your interrogatives quite satisfactorily. Say what? <sighs> Yo, I was like, get the fuck Whoa. out of here. I had to look it up. Yo, that's <laughs> something I would have never figured and out. I started looking it up and I was like, holy shit, he's Kit. He's the voice of Kit. Wow, mm. now, now that I'm like, I'm thinking back on it. Now that you think of his it. voice, like, oh shit. I yeah. kind of hear it. Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, Mr. Feen. Oh, Mr. Feen. Wow, he's you're already 95 years old, man. 95. So, um. I'm telling you, we're like random topicking today. So um, I had a topic here that last week we didn't discuss, and I just want to run through it quickly because I find it kind of weird. I want to hear your uh, take on this, right? So you guys know how those of us who have been raised on horror movies, everyone knows who Freddy Krueger is, right? Yes. Oh no, the whole... Uh, story behind everything we all know that the the main idea is in your dreams if you die you die for real die for right? real i think there's been movies there's actually a, i think a movie right where if you, there's a video game and if you play and you die you die I remember it was stay kind of alive a i think movie. yes stay it was alive a stupid movie please don't say it was a very good movie no okay i remember <laughs> it was very very bad 
So apparently now the creators, I think it is uh, pa Palmer Lucky. He's a creator of Oculus Rift says that he has a VR headset that will kill the user in real life if they die in the video game. That sounds like a whole lot of bull. It says that the headset is rigged with explosive charge modules aimed at the user's head. Oh. If they were to die in the game, the charges would go off, exploding their brain, according to Vice. Quote, the idea of trying your real life in your virtual avatar has always fascinated me. You instantly raise the stakes to maximum level and force people to fundamentally rethink how they interact with the virtual world and the players inside it. End quote. Lucky posted on his blog that he is, quote, pumped up graphics might, might make a game look more real, but only the threat of serious consequence can make a game feel real to you and every other person in the game, end quote. Lucky got the idea from the anime Sword Art Online. That's sick. that's some saw shit right there. That's what it reminds me of. Saw. Do you remember the, the you remember the movie where the girl has that collar where all the like all them um I'm guessing shotgun shells were pointing straight to her head? The third the third one, yeah. That's the third one. That's what it yes. reminds me of. I just don't I don't get it. Like <laughs> why? Like, why exactly why? why? Yeah, like why? See, so Hunger Games, everybody's seen that, right? Yeah, people yes. that are hungry. No, like <laughs> hungry. You see the movie, right? Wah, wah. Wah, wah. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, so Hunger Games. I remember a couple of years ago, there was an article where they were going. I think it was somewhere in Poland, Antarctica, Russia. One of these cold places. <laughs> I don't know exactly which one. I'm not going to look it up now, but I do remember there was an article um, where they were talking about creating and they had actually created already the system, how they were going to do it to do a real life like Hunger Games. Where you have to be the survivor, right? Obviously, you had to sign a waiver. Um, it was the same thing, the same um, idea, right? As Hunger Games, where they would drop you off somewhere remote and you had to survive and they had rigged like everywhere there was cameras i don't know what happened with that to be honest i mean those of you who are watching on youtube if you find something on that please leave it in the comments so we we'll appreciate if you can send it but yeah, i do remember that and that, and that i understood i was like okay like if you want to put yourself in a situation like that i mean you want to show the world how badass you are as a survivor all right. You want to show if you're a badass or a survivor, just go naked and afraid. Maybe it's that adrenaline hunger. That's what I'm saying. Listen, there's a lot of people in this world like adrenaline junkies. Like you guys, I don't know if you guys ever saw uh, what was it called? I think it was called Suicide Kings. Yeah. Where it was the whole premise. That was the word I was looking for earlier. The whole premise behind the show, which I found was great, and they canceled it, I think, like after one season, was that they would pick prisoners that were doing life sentences, right? And they offer, every, they picked amongst the prisoners, they picked people that had special abilities in the sense of um, real badass fighter um this other guy's like good with numbers and he knows all about how they launder money and shit like that the other guy knows how like the whole drug business and basically you work for the police and then every time i think they caught that that team of prisoners their job was to find fugitives that have escaped jail and every i think prisoner that they brought in they get time reduced from their life sentence so like a suicide squad. So something like that. Let's say you, I don't know, you want to get prisoners and whatnot. And hey, we're going to put you. I mean, and this so might sound cruel, though. Like You give them an option. If you if you survive this, you you walk a free person. Yeah. That's, 
it's like Death Race. Um, remember the movie Gay Gamer? I think it is with um Gerard Butler. Oh, yes, I do. That they I put remember. them in a game and they got to survive. And so, if they survive, they are set free. So, anyway, stuff like that, I, I kind of get. I'm not saying I agree with it, just in case for all you sensitives out there. We're not professionals. Exactly. We know, we know, we know, we know it, nothing. Okay. See, so, I can't um, say it right now. I can't, like, just bird it. So, um, <laughs> yeah. But a VR game that actually kills people to me is just, I don't know, it's kind of stupid. It's just It is. It's, dumb. it's ridiculous. Like, me, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> why? So, Just um, why? I guess we can jump into uh, today's case, being that it's Thanksgiving and people will be doing a lot of eating. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> kind of ironic. It it's kind of ironic. Birds and stuff like that. So we decided to pick this topic and this case for today. Talking about what is his name? Issei Sagawa. Issei Sagawa. Issei Sagawa. He's a rich dude, man. He's a rich dude. There's no reason for him to be acting this way. Issei Sagawa is, I think, the one, well, the one caught killer and cannibal that never did a day of jail. All right. Let's just start with that. Set the premise here. All right, so I'm going to read a little bit off of all that is in all that's interesting.com. Let me see. Do we have a writer here so I can credit? This was written by Katie Serena, okay? And checked by Adam Farley, published in August 17, 2021. And then updated in August 20, three days later, 2021. Okay. So Issei Sagawa was born on April 26, 1949. And for as long as he can remember, Issei Sagawa currently now is what, 73 years old? 70, yeah, 72, 73. 73. 73 years old. So as long as he can remember, he possessed cannibalistic urges and a fascination with eating human flesh. Fucking weird. He remembered with fondness his uncle dressing up as a monster and lowering him and his brother into a stew pot for eating. Yo, what kind of game is that, that, man? That sounds like a Does Bugs it. Bunny episode. <laughs> with the carrots. With the carrots, exactly, yeah. Um, he sought out fairy tales that involved humans being eaten, and his favorite was Hansel and Gretel. That is sick. I mean, Hansel and, so Hansel and, Hansel Gretel, and right? Gretel. I know that. Does the, the I don't remember the, the witch that eat children? No, no, I remember that. I remember, uh, yeah, the whole breadcrumbs to find the way, and uh, what is it? The lady ends up cooking them or some shit. But that's like, that's the grim story. I don't think for the kids. Yeah, goes no, that they way. supposedly. I'm not sure if it's the father or the hunter who saves them for some reason. But the grim story itself, I think they are eaten. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Hansel and Gretel. Okay. Um, he even recalls noticing classmates' thighs in the first grade and thinking, mmm, that looks delicious. Yum, yum. See, that sounds like a KFC commercial right there. Yeah, but that's fucking weird, man. Like who? A drumstick. A drumstick. Dude, in first grade, and you're already. Yeah, that, that's that's what bugs me out. Why? It, you know, Sick. what possessed him to have those thoughts in first grade? He was hungry. Well, he was. <laughs> he was born, no, no, no. He was born like very small. He was sick when, you know, when he was born. He, I think he fit in his dad's palm. So he's like four nine, and he's scrawny. I don't know, maybe lack of food. Uh, <laughs> even though they were rich, so I, yeah. I don't get it. I, I really don't. Fucking weird. I've never it heard is. of anybody looking at some uh, somebody's thighs. Like, mm, <laughs> Unless just... I mean, in a non-sexual manner. Yeah, yeah, like in a food way. So uh, so he blames the media's 
representation of Western women like Grace Kelly for sparking his cannibalistic fantasies, equating it with what most people would call sexual desire. When other people dreamed of betting these beautiful women, Sagawa dreamed of eating them. See that that fits in our Fra- crazy. In, yo, that fits in crazy. well in my description. I do a lot of mm, tea leaf, right? But I don't see it as feasting on her, you know. I just find it beautiful, you know. Who? What? Tea, Jennifer Tilly. Who's that? That's from. Chelsea. Oh, really? You, okay. Uh, I'll give you a simple movie. She comes out in um, Liar Liar as the blonde chick. Let me look at her now. She does. Um, Found. Um, uh, uh, Bride of Chucky. Bride of Chucky. That's the one I was trying to get. Really? She is the voice of uh, okay. Joseph's wife a and a Family Guy. Yeah, she's in. She's in Family Guy. Joe's yeah. wife. Like Joe's wife. Voice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I guess. Mm-hmm. See, but I don't look at her like I want to eat her. I, you know, I would love to meet her. But what kind of? I don't know. What's going through his head? A little bit of pepper, cayenne. Or... It's just weird, man. I'm sorry. It's just okay. Ise Segawa says the reason behind his cannibalistic tendencies can't be explained to or conceptualized by anyone who doesn't share his exact urges. You fucking think? It's simply a fetish, he said. For example, if a normal man fancied a girl, he'd naturally feel a desire to see her as often as possible, to be close to her, to smell her, and kiss her, right? To me, eating is just an extension of that, frankly. I can't fathom why everyone doesn't feel this urge to eat, to consume other people. He maintains, however, that he never thought of killing them, only gnawing on their flesh. <laughs> yum, yum. So it's a fetish. Yeah, man. No, but, but that's too so much weird. of a strong like, fetish. To eat, hey, it can't happen. Just, it's just, I don't know. Obviously, it can happen. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it can. No, it, it did it, happen. It does happen. It does happen. It did happen. It yeah. did happen. So he was he was always short and skinny with legs that look like pencils. <laughs> now, nutrient. He wrote, see, this is the part that starts bothering me. It's, I mean, obviously, yes, what he did is crazy, but I hate the aftermath. For him. Yes. We'll get there. Okay. Uh, he wrote in his best selling book in the fog. Yes. And he believed that at just under five feet tall, he was too repulsive to attract the kind of physical intimacy that would have tempered his desires. So that tells me he did this basically out of insecurities. I can't get this woman or I can't get a woman in a normal way, right? In a sexual way or whatever it is, but right? Still, man. So I'm right. gonna eat them. It. So well, this I'm gonna is eat how them. I can do it, which is insane. I'm not justifying, I'm just saying no, I'm, I'm not saying that you justify, but still, you know, st- what makes them I, I get it. You desire a woman, but to eat them, come on. So it says that Ise Sagawa had moved to Paris to study literature. At the Sorbonne, 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 a public research university. Over there, he said his cannibalistic urges took over. Quote, almost every night I would bring a prostitute home and then try to shoot them from behind. End quote. He wrote in the fog, quote, it became less about wanting to eat them, but more an obsession with the idea that I simply had to carry out this ritual of killing a girl no matter what, end quote. Eventually, he found the perfect victim. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, of course he has to kill her. He's going to eat her leg. Like, <laughs> So, let's see. Uh, Rene Hart- Hartabelt was a Dutch student studying with Sagawa at the 
Sorbonne. Sorbonne, Sorbonne, I don't know, man. But over time, Sagawa struck up a friendship with her, occasionally inviting her to his home for dinner. At some point, he gained her trust. He attempted to kill her once, unsuccessfully, before actually murdering her. The first time the gun misfired when her back was turned. See, God, this fucking guy was, there's so many things wrong with this guy. Like, you're going to kill somebody also, like, shooting them from the back. Okay. <laughs> She'll do the puppy eyes. Though most <laughs> would take this as a sign to give up, it only pushed Sagawa further down his rabbit hole. Quote. It made me even more hysterical, and I knew that I simply had to kill her, end quote, he said. The very next night, he did. This time, the gun fired, and Hardevelt was killed instantly. Sagawa only felt a moment of remorse before he became elated. Quote, I thought about calling an ambulance, he recalled. But then I thought, hang on, don't be stupid. You've been dreaming about this for 32 years, and now it's actually happening, end quote. Immediately after killing her, he raped her corpse and began cutting her open. Oh, really? Sick. You know, one thing that I, I see that they didn't mention, they also mentioned that he passed out when he first killed her. See, <laughs> fucking guy, like, I have no respect for this guy, like. No. No, it, no. At all. There is no respect. No. Quote, the first thing I did was cut into her buttock. No matter how deep I cut, all I saw was the fat beneath the skin. It looked like corn. <laughs> <laughs> corn. <laughs> he cut into her butt and it looked like corn. And it took a while to actually reach the red meat, Sagawa recalled. Quote, the moment I saw the meat, I tore a chunk of it with my fingers and threw it into my mouth. Mm. It was a truly historical moment for me. And that's sick. Ultimately, he said his only regret was that he hadn't eaten her while she was alive. Quote, what I truly wish was to eat her living flesh, he said. Quote, nobody believes me, but my ultimate intention was to eat her, not necessarily to kill her, end quote. Two days after killing Hartevelt, Sagawa disposed of what remained of her body. Apparently, I think the meat started stinking, obviously. Yeah. They didn't put that here, but I remember. Maggot and whatnot. He had eaten or frozen most of her pelvic region, so he put her legs, torso, and head into two suitcases and hailed a cab. That's bad. <laughs> mind you, yeah, mind you, this is a person that when they say he was in Paris to study, he was going for a PhD. This, this smart fucking guy. guy was not no. I, I, well, maybe book smart. Yeah, book smart. But he wasn't smart, smart because well, he must have done something, right? Not only because does he kill her, eat her, right? When the rotting again, this is not here, but I remember reading it. After he kills her and stuff, her torso and legs in the in the what are the luggage? Yeah, the suitcase. He goes to a park. It's still daytime when he goes. And he goes he got, to a park. The, the balls. He, exactly. He's got the major balls. Balls. What he didn't have in body, he had in balls. <laughs> so it says here that the taxi dropped him off at the boy the boy the. <laughs> Bolong Park. Yeah, it sounds like baloney. Yeah. Which had a secluded lake inside it. He planned to drop the suitcase in it, but several people noticed the suitcases dripping blood and notified the French police. When police found Sagawa and questioned him, his response was a simple admission. Quote, I killed her to eat her flesh. End quote. He said. Issei Sagawa awaited his trial for two years in a French prison. So he did go to jail then. Well, he didn't. He, didn't, he, he didn't was detained. Do, yeah, he didn't do he his, his uh, I mean, he didn't he didn't have a sentence, basically. Yeah, he, he was, was waiting. Wait, he was he was detained waiting for trial. 
When it was finally time for him to be tried, the French judge, Jean-Louis Brujuieri, blah, 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 declared him legally insane and unfit to stand trial, dropping the charges and ordering him to be held indefinitely in a mental institution. Let's stop right there. So what they don't say here is apparently this guy's parents were loaded. Yep. So let's look at the fact this guy, his parents was loaded. Four, nine, right? That's how tall he was. Fucking short ass dude. I can imagine him being one of those pricks that just super arrogant. My father and mother have money. Look at everybody like they're peasants. I can see how all that narcissism can feed into a fetish like people ain't shit. I just want to eat this person. Yeah. Right? I, I can do it. If I want it, I don't have it. That's it. You know, people ain't shit to me, basically. The fact that he's held in this Paris prison, whatever, waiting... And then the judge declares him insane. I can see again. I'm, we don't know this. We know Dick. Like we no know shit. Dick. No, that's our logo right there. Well, like, our fr- catchphrase. We know Dick. Like to be honest, I could see how Daddy came with like, bro. Here's a uh, X amount of zeros. Here's a check. Please make sure my son doesn't go to jail. You know, put him somewhere else. Right. So they put him in a mental institution. Then it says here that they deported him back to Japan where he was supposed to spend the rest of his days in a Japanese mental hospital. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. Because the charges in France had been dropped. (coughs) The documents were sealed and couldn't be released to Japanese authorities. Wink, wink. (laughs) <laughs> Therefore, Ka-ching. yeah, the Japanese had no case against Issei Segawa and no choice but to let him walk free. On August 12, 1986, Issei Segawa checked himself out of Matsusawa Matsusawa. Matsusawa Psychiatric Hospital in Tokyo. He has been free ever since. Wink, wink. The, 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 ching, ching. The case, the, the case was closed. There was no paperwork. You're free. Fuck out of here. So the question is, then we'll talk about, I guess, the rest. Of this. Where is Sagawa now, right? So let's check up. We haven't even spoken about what he did afterwards, but. Where is Issei Sagawa now, right? As of right when they wrote this article. It says that Issei Sagawa walks the streets of Tokyo, where he lives, free to do as he pleases. A terrifying thought when one hears that the threat of life in prison hasn't done much to quell his urges. Quote, the desire to eat people becomes so intense around June when women start wearing less and showing more skin. End quote. He said, just today, I saw a girl with a really nice derriere on my way to the train station. Derriere. Okay. When I see things like that, I think about wanting to eat someone again before I die. End quote. Quote. What I'm saying is I can't bear the thought of leaving this life without ever tasting that desire that I saw this morning. Yeah. (laughs) Or her thighs, end quote. He continued, I want to eat them again while I'm alive so that I can at least be satisfied when I die. The guy got balls, man. He's even planned how he will do it. I'm telling you, like, this guy has such, I mean, the balls on this fucking guy, man. Iron, iron balls. And he made money out of that. Yes. He's a so that's the shit. Not only he kills this girl that was trying to help him, 
Not only does he rape her corpse, he eats her ass, not a live ass, <laughs> a dead ass. He dug into that ass and found corn. <laughs> That's what he said. Full of corn, yeah. They look like corn. <laughs> not only does he does all this shit, then this fucking guy cashes in on it, too. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Because because people need their grim fix. Well, yeah. Uh-huh. 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 He said it. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> he said it. Uh-huh. 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 He said it. He said it. That's the word of the day. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I got to do the flashing like this, like <laughs> Kitty Herman. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, Pee Wee's Playhouse, you guys. Well, I know Junior remembers. Yes. All right. Um. Not only does he, hey, yo, it's just insane to me, man. And the fact that his book was a number one selling <laughs> book, like, yes. oh God. Okay, so let's just get through this. Hold up. See, but you know what? Look at it this way. They go out to like us and keep keep making them more famous because we keep talking about them. Oh well, yeah, but we're doing it for a purpose because well yeah, like we're giving shit. information out. You know, we're not we're, we're not applauding what he did. Do you think I'm gonna go and like buy a book from this fucking no, douche? Hell no, hell no, nuts! Like, all right, so download it, watch it, read it online. <laughs> Quote: I think either suki yucky or shabu shabu. Lightly boiled thin slices is the best way to go in order to really savor the natural flavor of the meat. In the meantime, however, Sagawa has refrained from cannibalism. Wink, wink. But that hasn't stopped him from capitalizing on his crime. He wrote restaurant reviews for the Japanese magazine Spa and enjoyed success on a lecture circuit talking about his urges and crime. Why? Again, I get like speakers like like what was his name? Uh, Loomis. Uh-huh. Right? The doctor. And yeah. I mean, we've seen this in many movies where they go through these traumatic experiences and then they talk about it and they become like motivational speakers or whatever. And, this is this is not something that happened to him. This is something he did to someone else. Okay. He talks about it freely, like it was nothing. And to date, he has published 20 books. Look at that. His most recent book is called Extremely Intimate Fantasies of Beautiful Girls. And it is filled with pictures drawn by himself as well as by famous artists. Quote, I hope that people who read it well, at least stop thinking of me as a monster, he said. Yo, I'm telling you, narcissism to the 10th power. Sagawa allegedly suffers from diabetes and suffered two heart attacks in 2015. He is now well, 72 at the time, but he's 73 now with his brother in Tokyo and continues to garner media attention. And in 2018, French filmmakers recorded the two talking Sagawa brothers. Sagawa, Sagawa brothers brother. ask him, as your brother, would you eat me? The only response Sagawa gives is an empty stare and silence. Creepy. <laughs> you know what's that? If I'm standing next to you, just having them eyes just staring at you, like, you want to eat me? Would you eat me? Like- would you eat me? <laughs> and the movie ends. It's just God. and they don't mention here the fact that this fucking guy also became a porn star. Yeah. Oh yeah. I read he was that. doing porn soft star. porn where he would bite the people. Like, like this guy truly, I'm telling you, I've never seen narcissism like this. Truly, this guy is a piece of shit. But it's truly this guy so fucking entitled. Obviously, I mean, I read a report that says that his family supposedly shunned him. Here it says that he has a brother and he's, I don't know, chilling with his brother. But the other report that I read was that his family totally shunned him and he was in Tokyo living by himself and like, you know, like a hermit or some shit in his house, mm-hmm. not coming out. And So he says, I mean, this case just makes me angry because it's God, like what makes you more angry, him or the people that applaud it? 
What makes me angry is him that I'm pretty sure he's really full of himself. Yeah, but there's many people that are that way. It's, it's the fact that people follow, bought his shit, and just kept following his stories. That's what made him big. Like, his attitude tells me that, yeah, I mean, obviously, we see many, like, serial killers and psychopaths and stuff like that, that they kill people, and obviously, they have no value for human life, and either they don't talk about it or, or you know, some of them show remorse at some point. But the fact that this guy, like, no remorse, like, to be honest, he gave absolutely no value to that woman's life. And people who support this are saying the exact same thing, in my opinion. My nose is very itchy today, just in case. I had to say that because those of you who see me on camera, I'm like scratching. Allergy season, just in case. Yeah. So, yeah, Mr. And he makes a ton of money. He makes and money. then he made money off he of it. Yep. And he did porn and he did <laughs> books, 20 books. Like motherfuckers like this deserve to starve. Even though That's nobody wants it. to publish his nobody wants to publish it, publish his shit now. You know, That's the fact that this guy says that he um what is it that he wanted to eat her while she was still alive, meaning you wanted someone you wanted to make someone suffer, basically. And, and you wanted to enjoy that suffering and see people like this need to be caught eye for an eye. You like eating people here. I'm going to cut your dick off and I'm going to feed it to you and I'm going to cut pieces off for you. And this is what you're going to eat. You want to eat human flesh while they're still alive? Here there you go. go. I'm going to feed you to yourself. Simple. Here's some balls. More for curiosity. The what? Not an alien. Have morbid curiosity of people that they need to know every gory detail and, and what goes through their mind. You know, it's like that fascination with the human brain and and, and what are they thinking? Like, I, I don't know. It's, it's... I mean, we get fascinated by shit like this too, to a point, right? Where we want to, we, we, we get fascinated by it. We want to read about it. We want to know about it. And we discuss it, obviously, in this podcast. But it just bothers me that somebody does shit like this. They don't pay for their crime and they end up getting paid for it, basically. Because that's what happened. He got paid for his crime. And became a celebrity. And he's living a comfortable life in Tokyo or whatever the hell he is. And he has a face like a douchebag. I just want to punch his face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at a picture of him. It's like, yeah, it makes you want to just pop one right in. I want to punch his stupid face like. <laughs> anyway, that has been Isis Sagawa. For those of you who were carving turkeys this weekend, that's what this guy was doing. Cutting up butts. <laughs> don't don't go there. Carving the butt. Carving up butts. So carving the like turkey. corn. If you see corn, it's not turkey. He was he was cracking butts. <laughs> and like Yeah, you know that he, he literally tried to get one girl, you know, just to cut off a butt cheek and eat it. Problem is she caught him and she called the cops. He got arrested, but guess what? Ching ching. Yeah. Paid the girl off. They yeah, dropped pa. the charges. Papa came over with his checkbook, and that's exactly. it. Exactly. You know, I could all I think about him, and I think about Kobe beef, which is like the priciest steak you could buy. <laughs> Kobe beef is the shit, bro. I'll tell you that much. Mm-hmm. He is from Kobe, and that's where it comes from. So I, mean, I can't wait for you guys to come to New York. And I want to take you guys to this uh, Korean barbecue I go to. Yeah, you've been me. You've been telling me about that for quite a while, oh, bro. Away go. Yeah, I gotta taste that. Good shit. Come on, I schedule the video with sombrero, and all I want is tacos. I've been wanting tacos Maybe. like for <laughs> working at Ponchos. Ponchos, uh, Ponchos employee. Tacos. Employee of the year. Yo, but Korean barbecues are the shit, man. I'm surprised they haven't done that in PR. Well, they probably I, have. I, I think they do. Like so I think we can stop it here. Uh, again, I remind everyone, if you have not done so yet, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, drop your comment, share it with your friends. If you are listening, subscribe to the channel, right? Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you are listening to us uh, podcast, 
Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, iHeart, uh, Google Play, no matter which one, drop us a review, drop a comment if you can, follow, share it with your friends. It's so important that you share with your friends. Don't keep all this fun to yourself. Share with your friends. Look for us on social media. You can reach out to us, drop us a message. We will write back. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram as The Grim Fix Podcast. And we want to hear your stories. If it's a ghost story or, I don't know, urban legends, paranormal, serial killer. If you're a serial killer and you want to confess on the- Hey, if you're a cannibal. <laughs> if you eat in How many butt cheeks have like you that, eaten? You yeah. know, we want to hear about it. We'll probably talk about it on the show. If you ate corny ass. <laughs> yep, if you ate corny ass. <laughs> Drop us a message on the Grim Fix podcast. Cornholes. <laughs> How many cornholes have you eaten? Until Corn the audio. next episode, my peoples. Be safe. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.